because you know my my wife's family they live in Gaza. They, they have uh, cousins and uncles there, um, and uh, their house also was bombed. We haven't been able to communicate with them for the past three days. Communication are lost, so uh, we don't know actually what is the uh, how is like how are they doing. But you know we're used to that. I mean it's it just like it's. It's, it's very repetitive. We're used to that. We're used to them being bombed every time and moving from one place to the other. Uh, you know, it's just like those Palestinians, they're very dramatic. Ah, Israel killing us. Uh, but they never die. I mean, they always come back. You know, they're, they're very difficult to kill, very difficult people to kill. I, I know because I'm married to one. Mm. I tried many times. Couldn't kill her. I mean, there's a dark humor there, and I understand why. Because oh, it's not dark humor. I really, I try to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human shields. I can never take her out. Tokoh yang melontarkan humor getir ke hadapan Piers Morgan yang baru saat anda lihat adalah Basem Yusuf. Bagi yang belum tahu siapa dia, berikut sekilas tentang Basem Yusuf. Basim Yusuf was known as the John Stewart of Egypt, the host of the most popular television show in the history of the Arab world. To the most popular man in Egypt. His show, which was called The Show, ended up drawing an audience of 30 million per episode. Basem yang dilahirkan di Cairo tahun 1974 ini sebenarnya seorang dokter bedah jantung. Namun pada tahun 2011, ia mulai membuat video di YouTube dan akhirnya menjadi pembawa acara satir politik di TV Mesir. Namanya melesat ketika terjadi revolusi di kawasan Arab yang dikenal sebagai Arab Spring. Pada tahun 2013, majalah Time menempatkan Basem sebagai salah satu dari 100 orang yang paling berpengaruh di dunia. Ia berurusan dengan penguasa saat di salah satu acaranya mengejek Presiden Mesir saat itu, Mohamed Morsi, dengan memparodikan topi yang dipakai Morsi. Pada tahun 2014, ia hengkang dari Mesir dan hingga sekarang berkarir di Amerika Serikat sebagai stand-up komedian. Buah pikir Basim Yusuf tentang kondisi politik di Timur Tengah dituangkan dalam sebuah buku berjudul Revolution for Dummies. Kita simak pandangannya tentang permasalahan di Palestina yang tengah memanas belakangan ini. Again, I understand the humor, but I, to be serious, uh, Basim, about this tonight, there okay, is. I will be serious. Now, I, I, I will be serious. I was watching your interview with Ben Shapiro, and I will tell you one thing. Yeah. I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people whoever walked this earth. He's very, very smart. I follow him and I believe everything he said. And when he came on your show, his solution was, and I quote, his solution was that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of <laughs> as possible to make sure that this will never happen again. Israel kills enough of these sons of bitches that this is not a problem again. Whenever anyone suggests that Israel is willfully killing civilians, that is the most ignorant, bigoted, anti-Semitic bullshit ever said. And anyone, anyone who call for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. There cannot be a ceasefire. Anyone who calls for a ceasefire is a terrorist sympathizer under these circumstances. So God forbid, I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer. So I agree with Ben Shapiro. I think we should kill as many son of <laughs> as possible. Well, let me, so okay. Far, but Basa, three, let me, uh, three, so, so, so far, 3,500 people were killed, mm. including 5,000 son of <laughs> in the bombing of the Baptist uh, 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 hospital as we speak right now. Mm -hmm. One third of those 3,500 were children. So my question to Ben Shapiro is, how many more son of bitches mm -hmm. do we need to kill so Ben Shapiro is happy? Okay, because but, it changes but, from but, so one year. It changes from one year. It's like fluctuating like crypto. So my question is today, what is the going rate today for human lives? I mean, 2014 was a great year for Ben Shapiro. 88 Israelis were died, and there was 2,329 Palestinians killed on the other side. That is one Israeli for 27 uh, Palestinians. That is a very good exchange rate. What I'm saying is, what is the exchange rate well, for I, today? Well, I, so I, you guys will be happy. That's my question. Well, it's not me, I, I it's not me guys. I, I, if you were Israel, what would uh, you... If I was Israel. If you were Israel and that had happened to you, what would you uh -huh. think would be the appropriate way for the country to respond? I would do exactly like Israel did, kill as many people as possible since the, the, the world is letting me do it. I mean, I, I can do it because I can, you know. Let's for a minute imagine a world without Hamas. Right. What will this world look like? Mm. Let's give this world a name and let's name this world the West Bank. Hamas has absolutely no control in the West Bank. And this, since the beginning of this year, only through August, 37 Palestinian kids were killed. Mm. No music festival, no paragliding. No Hamas. Mm. Since the occupation of the West Bank, 7,000 Palestinians were killed. 
no music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. Mm. I can go on and on and on and on. No, no, but you about, don't, you, don't need... you said that spreading lies like WMDs make mm. people look at those people as less of humans and they would accept the death of a million Iraqi, whether by sanctions, no, sanctions or by invasion, right? You are, you, you are a good man. This is amazing. And you know what is similar? Is when you spread the lies of 40 decapitated babies, although it was refuted. So what happens when people hear that, you know, killing babies is horrible. But when you say decapitated 40 babies, you are planting a certain image well, who has a said certain that? trigger in people's mind. Who has said huh? that? Who has said 40? Who has said that? Who, who has, has said, said 40 decapitated? Who has said you that? Have, you have repeat. No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. You haven't said on your show 40 decapitated no. babies? Never. Ben Shapiro didn't say it? No. Ron DeSantis didn't say Nobody it? Nobody has said it. Okay, but, uh, Peter, no, no, nobody haven't. said it? No. Oh, okay. Apakah okay. Piers Morgan berkata jujur? Simak klip-klip berikut ini dan Anda putuskan sendiri. Reading this new revelation about 40 babies being killed. Oh my god. And some of them Dent. being beheaded. And I was like, how how can any human being do that to a baby? I don't know. I I don't know. It's totally barbaric. It's not a, it's not the sort of thing a human being does. No, like they've even beheaded babies in one village. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. Who has said huh? that? Who has said 40... Who has said that? Who, who has, has said, said 40 decapitated? Who has said you that? Have, you have repeat... No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. You haven't said on your show 40 decapitated no. babies? Never. Ben Shapiro didn't say it? No. Ron DeSantis didn't say Nobody it? Nobody has said okay, it. Okay, uh, Peter... No, no, nobody no. said it? No. Oh, okay, okay. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Uh, ask, ask how do we get from where we are now to peace? Well, first of all, you need to change the perception. Uh, Nikki Haley, the American presidential candidate, said, we are in Israel in this because it's a fight between evil, uh, good and evil. Now, if you already decided someone is good, he can do no evil. And if you decide that someone is evil, it's good to kill them. Killing them is good. You see, and the thing is it, is, it is not like something new. I mean, I, I, I look at history and I see, I'm sorry to say, and I'm sorry to say that, but Westerners has, has always dealt like this with indigenous people. You first treat them like savages, you know, Native American, First Nation, Aboriginal. They're savages. Kill all the savages. And then when they're almost extinct, you start feeling sorry for them, you know, like animals. So maybe, maybe the solution is that we kill as many Palestinians as possible so the few of them that remains do not bother you. But I don't know, but there's no Hamas in the West Bank and they're still dying there. So what's your excuse? I don't have any excuse. The, okay, what's, what's your explanation? Sorry, sorry, uh, my earpiece went down. I, okay. I, listen, I don't make any pretense that this hasn't been a massive problem okay, what, 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 uh, between Palestine I, 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 and Israel I, yeah. going back to the mid-40s. We all know this, right? I, I, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 Piers, 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 listen. I'm not saying that you're making excuses, but if you are adopting a certain point of view, mm. you have to at least defend it. I'm telling you there is no Hamas in the West Bank. What is, what is the excuse? Mm. Not your excuse. What is the excuse to kill those people? Mm. Well, it's, listen, this question of proportionality is one that... No, it, no, no, answer my question. I've been answering your question. You answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. I want to understand what is the logic of Israel carpet bombing Gaza. I mean, if there is a logic, if it is a good... If this will make Israel safe, I want to hear the logic. So if they continue bombing, what are they hoping to achieve? Well, this I think what, we, know what what we know what their stated aim is. Their stated aim is to eradicate yes. and wipe out Hamas. They believe Hamas no, are, yeah, living, but... are living predominantly in northern Gaza. They also are aware they're living amongst civilians. So it's an incredibly difficult okay. thing. As, so, I said, as I said so, in my so monologue, so, 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 you know, it is so very, very so difficult to see how I, they I, do I, this I, without I, massive collateral if damage. I can, so if I can understand this correctly, basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organizations do, because terrorist organizations will have no chance beating a whole nation in battle. So they terrorize and they kill the civilians in order to spread fear and terror so they can turn against their government to change their policy or 
to resign. You have just compared Israel with ISIS. American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel. We're giving them four billion dollars every year. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever, America ever done. If I was Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them I hate bad investment. They haunt me, you know, like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself. And I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24 seven. Israel wants you to believe that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so difficult. It's like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He f***s you up and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Basim. look at Israel as Superman, but they're really Homelander. Wallahi, they are like, they are, you, you, they are shooting Basim, fish in a barrel thing. and I'll... they are annoyed with the splashes. Basim. Oh, by, by, by the way, my, my, my wife's family is, is all right and they send us a house. It's, it's bombed. It's beautiful. It's, it's going to be a good... Uh, uh, Like Halloween theme, so well, I'm very sorry what... Anda puas dengan lontaran-lontaran okay. pendapat Basim? Piers Morgan ternyata masih penasaran Setelah wawancara online tersebut oh. Ia terbang ke Amerika Untuk wawancara babak kedua Yang dilakukan secara langsung berhadapan Nantikan inti sari pendapatnya Di part 2